In this video, we're going to talk about a common marketing tactic that will help you get inside the head of your readers. Stay tuned. When you're marketing your book, it helps to know who your target audience is. Yet this is often one of the hardest parts about marketing. If you've published a book so far, then you've probably picked up a few fans. You probably have positive reviews, mailing list subscribers, Facebook likes, etc. But who are those people? Because if you can figure out who they are and get inside their heads, then your marketing and promotion will become a thousand percent more effective. And the way to do that is to create a reader persona. In marketing, it's called a buyer persona. A persona is a fictional profile of your target reader using real data that you already know about your target audience as a whole. So in this video, we're going to create a reader persona from scratch so you can see how it works. I'm going to show you the very persona I'll be using for the Author Level Up series of books that are coming in the future. Now, disclaimer. This is pretty much impossible to do if you haven't published a book yet. You'll benefit from this video if you have at least a couple of books out with some reviews and mailing list subscribers. Also, you could borrow my persona, but you'll find that your target reader is different from mine, even if we're in a similar niche. So use this as a starting point. Remember that video I did on advice. Here's our fictional reader. Meet Eric Jackson, age 34. He lives in the United States, makes a middle-class income, he's got a BA in engineering and works as an engineer at a small company. Eric has established a career as an engineer and makes excellent money, but he's not happy. He discovered indie publishing by stumbling onto the self-publishing podcast and he caught the bug. He's published five books. He blogs about writing and another hodgepodge of things, but that blog is pretty small and he's wondering whether to even continue. He does all the things successful authors advise, but still isn't seeing success. He doesn't feel like a beginner, but he has beginner sales. His first book sells a few copies here and there. The cover is decent, but he doesn't fully understand genre or book covers. He's open to just about anything and slowly learning to bust common myths about writing. He reads science fiction and fantasy and buys indie. He likes to leave reviews on Goodreads, and he also likes graphic novels. Now that you have a little bit of a sense of who he is, let's talk about Eric's attitude. He read a lot of genre fiction growing up, so he's open to that. He reads exclusively on his Kindle or phone. He prefers indie publishing, but would do the right deal with a publisher if offered the right contract. He has emotional ups and downs. He's ecstatic when he sells one book and worried when he doesn't sell any in one week. He hasn't had the experience yet to understand how the law of averages works in his favor. Eric has unmet needs too. He has a constant need for information that will level up his career. He needs a better brand, both in terms of his books and his author brand. He needs to understand business better. He needs to understand craft better. He sometimes engages in the wrong kinds of marketing, but only because he doesn't know any better. He doesn't know what he doesn't know, and he wants to know exactly what that is. That's the basic of who Eric is. Some of you watching this might have identified with many of his traits. Now, how did I do that? How did I get inside his head? I started by reading book reviews and paying close attention to the people that left reviews for my nonfiction books, as well as reviewers in books similar to mine. I then scanned my mailing list and paid attention to those people too. I got a general sense of who they were in terms of age, gender, geographic location, and education that way. Next, I focused on four major areas, their lifestyle, their attitude, their unmet needs, and how I can meet those needs. Now for lifestyle, this was purely fictional. I made up the name, the career, the life, and the story. For attitude, I paid attention to what my readers were saying, word by word. From reading between the lines, I got a sense of what their worldview is and how they feel about publishing in their careers. If you're a fiction author, you would also want to pay attention to any books or authors that readers compare your book to. It'll give you a tremendous amount of insight into their preferences. Once I understand readers' attitudes, then I can understand what their needs are. And when I understand their needs, I can come up with solutions to help them. It's really that simple. The key is to make sure that you don't go overboard with this. You know, don't, don't spend you know, a whole week doing reader personas, please. <laughs> That's because the persona itself is really not that important. It's the process. In doing it, you'll start to understand your readers so well that you won't actually need a persona. If anything, this is a helpful exercise that will guide your thinking in the right direction. You'll be surprised what kind of connections and associations your brain will start to make during this process. And you'll discover marketing nuances that weren't obvious before. Remember, don't make this stuff up or it won't help you. Use real data as the basis for your persona, even if you don't have very much of it. As your career progresses, your understanding of your target audience will improve, and so will your marketing. That's it for this video. If this is your first time watching, I'd love to have you subscribe. 
And if this video helped you in some way, do me a favor and click the like button. Thanks for watching.